We have a set of coronal holes that are rotating in through the Earth strike zone and could bring us some more aurora. Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week is definitely kicking into high gear. We have some coronal holes that are rotating into the Earth strike zone. You can see them here. Bam, bam, bam. All three of them are going to be rotating through the Earth strike zone over the next couple days. They're sending us some fast solar wind. As a matter of fact, we're already beginning to see some of that fast solar wind. It's bringing aurora to high latitudes. But before this is all through, which is going to be probably in through the weekend, we could actually bump up to storm levels. So aurora photographers, Definitely stay on your toes. This is a rare solar minimum storm because they just don't happen that often right now. So enjoy it. Now, unfortunately, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, the news isn't so great for you. We have a spotless sun right now, and it looks like it's going to stay that way for a while. Solar flux is cleared down into the mid-60s, which means radio propagation on Earth's day side has totally tanked, and I know it. Please don't pelt me with olives. Switching to our m -flare threat meter, you can see we are extremely low with the x-ray flux we're actually sitting well below the b floor and therefore by proxy the solar flux continues to be low we're actually sitting in the mid 60s with solar flux which is about as low as you get typically during solar minimum and these conditions will continue we are totally flatlined because we have a spotless sun so amateur radio operators and emergency responders can expect that radio propagation is going to continue to be poor on earth's day side the only nice thing is that gps users your reception should look pretty good Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've been hovering between unsettled conditions and quiet conditions. We did get a little bit of activity back on the 22nd where we bumped up to unsettled conditions and got a little bit of aurora. This was due to a pocket of fast solar wind from a very small coronal hole, but it really didn't last all that long before things began to quiet back down again. Since then, we've been pretty much un unsettled, almost pretty quiet actually, until about the 30th into the 31st, that's when we're getting to see activity ramp up again. This is due to the first of those set of coronal holes that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone. As you can see, it has bumped up the activity level just a little bit, and this should continue. We might even bump up to active conditions, maybe even a chance for some solar storm conditions here over the next few days. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase, with the new moon being on the first. So you night sky watchers, now's a perfect chance to catch those dim objects in the sky, including the Alpha Capricornids meteor shower. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially backsided monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. Now you can see those two holes, the, the dark regions on Stereo's west limb. Those are the two holes that are part of that set of coronal holes that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone this week. And you can kind of see them as they leave Stereo's uh, field of view on the west limb. And just behind them, you see two bright regions. I had high hopes that those bright regions would continue to develop and maybe even turn into sunspots, but nope, they just kind of fizzled out and died. So unfortunately, with those dying and then looking at the rest of Stereo's disk, it looks like the sun is going to continue to remain spot easily over the next week so this means solar flux is going to stay in the mid 60s and poor radio propagation is going to be the name of the game easily over the next week if not longer before we get a chance for some improvement Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are beginning to feel the effects from the first pocket of fast solar wind from that first coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone and which will be followed by several more. Now this first pocket of fast wind isn't really all that strong. At high latitudes, NOAA is only expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 25% chance of a major storm. And at mid latitudes, we're also expecting unsettled conditions, but only about a 15% chance of active conditions and then things will settle down over the next day or so before we get hit by yet another pocket of fast solar wind which could actually raise us up to active conditions possibly even storm levels if it's strong enough so this should be a kind of a bit of a bumpy ride over the next few days and aurora phot photographers you will have a chance a sporadic chance to catch some aurora easily through the weekend and possibly early into next week 
Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, well, the story isn't so great as it is for the Aurora photographers. Here we have a spotless sun, so everything is in the green when it comes to big solar flares. This should make GPS users very happy on Earth's day side because we have no risk for radio blackouts. But it does mean that solar flux is sitting in the mid-60s. This is about as bad and as dismal as it gets. Radio propagation is definitely poor on Earth's day side, and unfortunately, Unfortunately, this is the way it's going to continue easily over the next week, so you're just going to have to hang in there if you're an emergency responder or an amateur radio operator. Now, also because it's solar minimum, we do have a higher cosmic ray flux impinging on our atmosphere than we normally would. So you frequent flyers, and this does include the air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So space weather this week is definitely picking up. Well, at least it is if you're an Aurora photographer. We have a set of coronal holes that are rotating in through the Earth's strike zone and will be sending us some fast solar wind that could bump us up to storm levels easily at high latitudes and bring Aurora maybe even down to mid-latitudes. So your Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, expect to see a decent show. If you're at mid-latitudes, well, you're going to have to stay on your toes, but there is a chance that you could catch a glimpse of the Aurora as well. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, while the picture isn't so great for you, we are sitting with a spotless sun right now, and that means the solar flux is tanked. We're back into the mid-60s for solar flux. Ugh, can it get any worse? So radio propagation on Earth's day side is going to be poor. Radio propagation on Earth's night side might be a little bit different because of the solar storming, but it most likely won't be all that great either, unless you're dealing with auroral propagation. Now, you GPS users, on the, you're on the other hand, you like the solar flux being being low. So your GPS reception on Earth's day side should be pretty nice. Even at low latitudes, you should be getting some decent reception. It's just on the night side, well, with this solar storming, you're going to need to stay away from Aurora and away from those Dawn Dust Terminators in order to make sure that your reception is spot on. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.